the mills though were still going and there was a big deal about the mills and the new ownership and all these people had come out of the hills of Virginia to work in Leakesville, to work in Spray basically, and then later Draper in 1905 was Draper. And here comes the new owners, and there was this fear that they were gonna shut everything down and all these people were gonna be out of work, they'd left the farm, here they're gonna be left hanging. They didn't own the houses because the houses were rented from the company. What are we going to do? The mill, Marshall Field apparently recognized this problem and immediately announced plans to upgrade the equipment in some of the mills and invested millions of dollars to upgrade some of the equipment and keep people happy. And then they jumped right in and started building Spray Y, the North Spray Y, the Draper Y, and they helped fund the Leaksville Y to create spaces for people to communicate, to have places to go and celebrate and have parties, whatnot organized sports and whatnot. And in addition, they brought in a music professor, worked office in the Spray YMCA, and his job was to organize a local community orchestra, which he did. Each mill had its own band. He taught music at the Y, and according to a Lixwell News article I read, he was teaching up several hundred students guitar at one time. So this was a big deal and it was in the time frame when Charlie Poole got to be famous. And I don't know if people really realize just how famous he was outside the area, but in the 1920s, according to some one source I read, he sold 80,000 records in the 20s when the major mega stars you always read about were selling 20. So he was huge. If he hadn't been an alcoholic, there's no telling where he would have gone with all that talent. Um, but then he died right as the depression started setting on and the mills were being run by then by a local person called Luther Hodges.